was around seven years old when I received for Christmas the book called Special Animals by Guinness Records, which included all kind of interesting animals, the biggest one, the smallest one, the fastest one. And I heard about the bearded vulture, or I've seen the bearded vulture in this book first time in my life. There was an amazing picture about the animal and also some information. And obviously I got captivated by the fact that it's mostly or exclusively feeding on bones. And again, it was just simply beautiful. After that, I've seen the species on, on a documentary. Honestly, I can't recall if it was BBC or National Geographic, but I've seen it, I've seen its behavior, and I fell in love with it. And it got to the list of species, which I really, really want to see once in my life, in its natural habitat. 2017 was the year when finally I got to see this animal. I, I had a chance to lead a small group expedition to Ethiopia, to the Ethiopian highlands. The customers wanted to see gelada baboons and take pictures of these species. And they got to do that. And I was also very happy to see them. But I also realized that this is the best place on earth, probably, to see a bearded vulture. So every single chance I got, I kept looking around up in the sky, trying to find these animals. And actually, it was indeed not too hard to find them. Almost every day, early in the morning or late in the afternoon, sometimes in the middle of a hike, they appeared. They were circling around us and even managed to see one of them picking up a bone. It was like a spine of some kind of animal. It was flying with it, then it threw it. It fell on the rock, broke, and uh, and the vulture just landed next to it and and swallowed the pieces whole. It was amazing. But everything was really far. It was very difficult to take a good picture, more like impossible with the camera I had. It was enjoyable with binoculars, but but it was still far. And the last day on the last campsite, we had a lot of different uh, eagles and also and different vultures around the campsite because it was not a simple campsite. It was also a kind of a truck and bus stop where there was a small restaurant more like a container where all the food leftovers remainings bones were thrown behind the container or on the hillside for the animals mostly the birds to pick it up actually there were some other animals picking it up as well but that might be another story later on so there were also bearded vultures around and i could see them on our last evening or last afternoon but once again they were pretty far and at this point I decided that I have to do something and I picked up my satellite phone, which I have normally for emergencies only, and I used it as I felt that it's an emergency. I called uh, my contact in the city and asked him to please bring me bones, a lot of bones. It was pretty difficult to get the message through. He first didn't want to understand me, not because of his English or because of the line, it just simply did not think that somebody will ask for bones. When he finally understand what I wanted and why I wanted it, he got excited. The next day, the next morning, he arrived with the 4x4 and he brought the big bag of bones, which actually I needed help with. So two of us carried it to the cliffside, evenly distributed it, then put a GoPro, like a hidden GoPro there, which was remotely triggered and we decided to hide. Some of us was just laying down in the grass further away, somebody was behind the bush, and we were just waiting and waiting, hoping for a bearded vulture to show up. First there were some other birds, other vultures, but eventually, eventually the bearded vulture showed up. Actually a couple of them showed up. One of the couple was just hovering above the bones, checking it up out. I thought first that it's going to land, but it was not the one landing, it was the one which was sent out to, to be the scout. And then the other one arrived, landed, chose a bone, eventually looked around, then was comfortable enough, picked up the bone and flew away. The other bird landed for a second, which I think I didn't even see the first time I was there. I managed to see it only from, from the GoPro footage. I was so concentrated on the one which was close to me managed to take two or three pictures only 
and two videos with my camera plus plus the hidden uh, GoPro footage and then the rest of that one minute when the bird was there I was just staring at it and and just enjoying the whole experience and feeling blessed that after 27 years wanting to see this animal or first encountering this animal in my favorite book I got to see it in the wild even though yes I did need to help mother nature a little bit with the bag of bones it sounds bad but at least it was in a place where where the birds all of these birds were already accustomed to to the humans and every day they would come and look for scrapes and and leftovers and bones around the, the human campsite so their basic behavior did not need to change at all the difference was that right now they got an amazing quality meal instead of some some scraps only so the birds had a good day and so did i and so did we so now that because of the coronavirus uh most of us are in the house myself included i thought that i will try to share some old memories and old stories for those who love wildlife and nature so we can pass our time a little bit better and miss the outdoors and miss the wildlife encounters a bit less so these will be my little virtual encounters videos and narrations i hope you liked it let me know what do you think about it